Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to calculate gamma exposure levels on a daily basis. The purpose of this tutorial is to collect the data for the GEX levels so we can use it later on in the back test. What the script will do is use our end of day options data and for each of the unique underlying symbols that we have collected data for, it's going to calculate the gamma exposure levels for the next day options and for all of the option expirations that are available in our data set. You can use the script and schedule it to run right after you collect your options data, which is how I have it set up. Once it has calculated the gamma exposure levels for a particular stock, it's going to go ahead and save that information as an RDS file. We can take a look at the folder of what that looks like. And if we take a look at any of these underlines, you'll see two additional folders, one for the gamma exposure levels using all of the available expirations and one for the level on next day options. It looks like these folders that were modified yesterday are all new underlying symbols, which I did not have data for. So we can expect to just have one file in there. Let's take a look at this file to see what it actually saved. So this is what we can expect from the script the gamma exposure for the calls, puts, and combined, the flip price, the underlying symbol, where the stock closed, the run date, or when this was calculated, and the actual expiration. So the script will do that for all of the options in your data set. Now that we know what to expect, let's go ahead and go over the script. We're gonna start off by requiring all of these packages. So it's first gonna start off by testing whether or not today or the day that it runs is a business day. If it is, it's gonna step into this block. Otherwise, it's just gonna print that it's not a trading day and no calculations will be made. So if it is a trading day, we're gonna go ahead and set that or assign that into dates. Once we have our dates set, we're gonna pass them into this L apply. And we only have one function so if i minimize this it's the only thing that we're calculating but if you want to do this for data that you have already saved you can always do so and i've set up some examples here in line 14 and 15 where you can assign your dates or your trading days that you have data for and it'll go ahead and pass those into this L apply and i actually wanted to calculate these levels for the options i already had which are stored in a database so you can comment or delete this line as this will just source some functions that i have to request options data from my database next we're going to get the historical one year treasury rate since we're going to be needing that for our options and we need to do some formatting on this rate since it's annualized. So we need to divide it by 100 and then 360. Now if the rate for the day that we're running this is not available, we're just gonna use the previous rate. Now we need to test whether or not the current dump for the options data is available. So from lines 32 through 35, we're gonna check every five minutes until we have the current day's data set. So you're gonna need to change your path in line 32 to wherever you save your options data. Once it detects that it's available, we're gonna go ahead and read it in. And you're also gonna to need to change the path in line 37. Now I'm using my data that we scraped from the CBOE. Once we have read in all of our options, we need to create a function where we just pass in a ticker, the trade date we wanna calculate our levels for, and our risk-free rate. Now these two are identical as far as calculations. The only difference is that this first one is going to grab my options from my database whereas the second one is just going to use the data set in line 37 so if we go ahead and open up this function it's going to subset all of our options to that specific underlying symbol we then need to make sure that these columns in line 281 are numeric in order to make appropriate calculations we're then going to subset all of our options to the specific trade date that we pass in in line 290 we're gonna split up our calls and puts, and we're gonna use the close price for the underlying that's available in my options data set to create a range for the gamma exposure levels. So what I did was created a range that's 50% above and below the current close and assigned that into stock range. Now we're gonna make calculations for all of the calls. So for each of the strikes that are currently available, we're gonna gather the implied volatility, the interest rate, the expiration in years, and that information is gonna get passed into the Greeks function from derivative markets. We're gonna convert that into a data frame. We're gonna assign the open interest, the underlying close, our Greeks that we just calculated, the strike and the direction. So I believe I used one for calls and negative one for puts. We're gonna go ahead and row bind all of our results. And we're gonna use that data to summarize by each underlying close in our range. And for each of those levels, we're gonna multiply the gamma times 100 by the open interest, the underlying level, and a 1% move of our underlying, and then the direction. Next, we can calculate the GEX for the puts, which is exactly the same thing. So if we open this up, you will see essentially the same calculations, but we're gonna use our put function instead, rather than the call, and our direction is gonna be a negative one. And then we summarize as we did for the calls, and we combine the data into a single data frame. And then we need to figure out the flip price, so you're in line 356. We're gonna find the location where the signs are flipped. So from that line, 
down to 385 will get added after our calculations. So if we take a look at our example again, that code block is just going to add rows 15 and 16 in our case, just so that we know where they intersect, which would be our flip price here. So continuing on, we need to add a couple of more things, which is the flip price as a column, our symbol, the stock close, the date, and the next available expiration column. But since this calculated all of our levels for all the options, this will be an A. You don't need to worry on adding folders for the newer stocks in your data set. So the script will take care of adding the folders for you, which is done in line 393 through 397. So just change the paths on where you want to save these. Finally, we can go ahead and save all of our calculations in the all expirations folder, as I showed you earlier. Now within the same function, it's going to proceed to calculate the GEX for the next available expiration. And the only difference between this block and the previous one is that we're gonna locate the next available expiration. So if you wanna use near term options or a certain range, this is where you would need to change it. Everything else stayed the same. We're gonna split up our calls and puts. We're gonna create the range for all of our levels. We're gonna calculate our call gamma and put gamma. So these are the same as well. And it'll go ahead and return the same data frame as we did for all of our options. And now for the expiration column, we can go ahead and add the next available expiration. And we're gonna save these into our next expiration folder. So that's all that this function is gonna be doing. Now that we have that function set, we're gonna extract all of the unique underlying symbols in our data set. And we're gonna pass in all of our underlying symbols into that function that we just created, along with our current trade date and our risk-free rate. Now you'll see a printout of the progress, just so you know that it's running in the background and so that you can get a general idea on how long it's gonna to take to run. And once this is completed, you'll get a total runtime, which I believe took about three or four hours to run on about 5,000 different underlying symbols. And if you didn't get any errors, you should see line 536 which just represents the end of the script. Well guys, this concludes the video. In our next tutorial, we're gonna be using the historical GEX and see if we can do a bit of back testing and see if we find anything interesting. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.